What's up guys? Welcome to the SBL Season X, sorry, Season 10 draft video. Um, we're going to start off with, oh, I'm going to introduce everyone. Uh, I'm Brian. We got Noah and Joe here. Hello. Hi. All right. What's going on guys? Excited to be back. 10 seasons. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's been a long, long, several years of doing this. Yeah. I can't believe we're still doing these videos. Okay. So we're going to get started uh, with my team. Uh, it consists of Kieran Black, Ronan Wash, Cobalion, Charizard Mega Y, Azumarill, Roserade, Nidoqueen, Queen, Honchkrow, Claydol, Vikavolt, and Hitmonchan. I'll let you guys get started because this is my team. All right, so uh, we did an average ranking. Uh, we had four people do like a 1 to 10 ranking on teams. Uh, and the four people were Brian, me, uh, Irob, and Jarrett. And this team had an average of 7.3. So kind of a lower end, actually, to start off, Brian. So yeah. uh, that sucks. I even rated but, myself really highly. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. In there, it was not very good. <laughs> but, yeah, so like I, I think my thing looking at this team is that uh, – Offensively, it's got like a lot of bleakers, but like it's gonna have a hard time cleaning up teams. Like switch ins are gonna be so few with Z Kiram, Zard Y, Azumarill. Speed, you, you're basically only looking at Cobalion cleaning things up, and without Z moves, it's gonna have a tough time kind of finishing that off. But on the other hand, you're gonna still have a really hard time switching in. To like everything, so it might be a kind of thing where you can kind of just clean up with wall breakers. But having a team where, like last year, for example, Terrakion was my highest speed, which is the same as Cabalion, and that was really constricting because like my entire team got outsped by Scarf, Scarf Cartana. Mm -hmm. So I'll be interested to see how you try to kind of get around this little like speed concern. But other than that, I love the hazard control with Zard Y. There's like a got two spinners, you've got Rotom Wash, which is a phenomenal pairing. So I'm excited to see. Uh, how you uh, try to make Zard Y work, because I don't know if we've really had like a great Zard Y team ever in this league, so I'm excited to see you pull, try to pull that one off. Yeah, yeah, some really good points. Uh, I do definitely see that uh, I could use a better cleaner, but uh, I'm going to basically just be relying on uh, Scarfs and Azumarill to do a lot of the work for me, so, mm -hmm. so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. All right, moving on, we're looking at Karn's team. It consists of Torrenty, Heatran, Garchomp, Diancy Mega, Slowbro, Rotom Mo, Mianxiao, Palisant, Muk Alola, Tauros, and Jinx. And the Z users are Heatran and Jinx. All right, so I'll just, uh, before we get started, this team got a rating of 8.5, which is actually the second highest ranking out of all the teams. So, uh, on this one. so what I think of this team, it's really powerful on the top end. It's got four tier ones in Torrenty, Heatran, Garchomp, and Diancie. And they're all incredibly threatening Pokemon. I don't know how we got away with getting all of these. Um, <laughs> they're all pretty problematic to deal with in their own right. Um, something I think that's really strong about this team is the pairing of Heatran, Garchomp, and Diancie. They're all very offensive mons. And they all cover each other's um, weaknesses with uh, Diancie being able to take down fightings and that sort of stuff. Um, and dragons as well that... Heatran and Garchomp might not as like as much. Um, and the back end of the draft is pretty good as well. It's got some bulk and some pretty good uh, offensive threats in Tauros and Jinx. So I think it's a pretty well-balanced team. Yeah, so like, I think the, the main thing taken away here is that like there's not necessarily one area where you're like, oh my god, it's amazing at this. So you're going to see, like, for example, Dennis's team later, and Dennis was just like, screw it, I'm only drafting offense. And if you've seen our previous videos, yeah, that's all he does all the time. But looking at this team, it's kind of just like, it's got some great defensive cores, it's got some solid breakers, some solid cleaners. So, like, overall, there's just not really a general knock that you can, like, mm -hmm. team on paper. And I think that's honestly might even be one of the best ways to build because it's you can't just necessarily say like okay i'm going to try to bring like dual scarfers and try to outspeed him just because you might have a hard time breaking walls and then on the other hand um like if you want to try to like maybe beat him by slowing him down doing like a trick room he's got that slow bro sitting there which is really cool pairing so like overall i just 
well-rounded this team is. There's like no obvious weakness that you can go into team building and say like, okay, I'm going to exploit this particular area. If there's anything, he's going to run into a lot of ground coverage just because I don't love Alolan Muck with Heatran necessarily because Alolan Muck benefits from any ground coverage. But other than that, that's kind of the only knock I would say, which isn't even really a knock. They still have good synergy elsewhere. Um, but overall, yeah, it's a really solid team. Excited to see him use it. All yeah, right. I um, I was mostly intrigued by the double uh, regenerator on Karn's team. He's got Tornado's T and Slowbro. Triple, Mancha. Oh, and Mancha, so triple, Jesus, yeah. So uh, that's, I mean, if he can pivot out of those, he can... I mean, it's basically, it's a lot of extra health he gets to work with, so. Yeah, that can definitely be a pain with a, a lot of offensive threats as well to, to pair with those, because you're really not doing much to any of the, the tougher, bulkier mons, and then in comes a big Heatran or a Garchomp, and then you're just in a terrible position, so it can be a real pain. All right, moving on, let's go to Sifra's team, who's got... Jirachi, Scizor Mega, Dragonite, Pelipper, Clefable, Seismitoad, Toxicroak, Incineroar, Kingdra, Raichu, and Avalug. All right, uh, real quick, we, uh, I think we have Jared entering the uh, entering the video. Jared, can you hear us? Can you talk? Yeah, it should be working now, right? Oh, nice. Awesome, we got another person. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> Sifra's team was actually the lowest rated team throughout our drafts. Giving, getting a score of 6.9, uh, which is interesting considering Sifra is our defending champion. Uh, is that two-time actually defending champion, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, back-to-back. Back-to-back, oh, -back, which if you... Another trend in our league is we love having back-to-back -back champions and then get they always seem to get taken out that third year. No one can ever go for that three-peat, so... It'll be interesting to see how he starts with a team like this because I've talked to Sifra about this, and he basically told me his goal going into this draft was make Dragonite work. And, like, because Dragonite's a really polarizing thing, polar, polarizing model, and we actually moved it down to Tier 2 because we haven't really seen it used effectively. But if that was necessarily the goal, I don't know if this was necessarily the most optimal way to go about this because, like, the hazard control already is kind of weak because you're... I mean, you're looking at Scizor, Pelipper for Defog with Spin Avalog, which is, that can easily be abused, um, especially by potential rockers, and they're all like slow, susceptible to taunt. So I'll be really interested to see if this, if that was the goal, if that's how he tries to go about making that Dragonite being his best mon. But overall, you still got that like subtle like Rain Core Pelipper Kingdra with Ashi, which it's gonna be cool. Uh, I don't know if Jirachi gets Thunder. I know it gets Thunderbolt, so that would be something fun to watch. So I'm um, and oh, we also got Seismitoad as well. So some Seismitoad that could be fun. So uh, I'd be interested to see how he kind of mixes that, pretty the sweeper I'm going for here with that Raincore in, uh, in the back. Yeah, I mean, I personally didn't love this team. I liked it uh, with the, once he picked the Pelipper. I was like, I was pretty excited for what he could do with the rain stuff. And then it was just like, it, it's pretty mediocre. I am kind of excited to see a uh, special Dragonite with 100% accurate, accurate Hurricanes. I think that's something that'd be cool to see because uh, I think it gets a lot of interesting special moves, especially with the Z. Um, I do kind of like how Jirachi and Scizor can provide a lot of momentum. I just don't feel like there's, I just don't feel like Dragonite's the thing to work off of that, if that makes sense. Anyways, um, Joe, any thoughts? Jared, any thoughts? Yeah, so when I looked at this team, um, basically I'm like, where, who's going to be picking up the kills for him? You know, there's there's okay offensive mons. <coughs> there's no one you can really go through and sweep unless he's going for Jirachi flinches, which, like, I'm a big fan of, so. <laughs> Aren't we all? Other than that, I mean, it's, it looks like a pretty average team that doesn't really excel at anything. So it's no, it's no Kings Rock Sinchino, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> none of that. But <laughs> it is Sifra, so he'll find a way to make it work. So I don't I mean, appreciate yeah. it too much. Go ahead, Jared. 
Uh, I've got the same sort of problems. I also think, you know, he was, it looked like he was going to like draft a rain team and then drafted a pretty not great rain team. And then, you know, his defog and spin options aren't very good. He's going to have to probably rely on either Scizor or, uh, or Pelipper week in, week out for that if he's going to want to get rid of Hazards. I don't know. It's not a very good team. And I think to touch on Joe's point, it doesn't have a lot of hard hitters, really. I guess. And, and Dragonite are probably the most viable candidates there. Yeah. I don't think it does enough for low ratings, but, you know, this one got a five <laughs> from me. <laughs> I, I really don't like this, this team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, Sephiroth. Please don't. He is Sephiroth, and one. he's good. So yeah, he is good. So I think he'll yeah, he'll make do with it. He'll somehow. be at the top of the standing somehow. So and then another another thing to uh, keep in mind here is that like this is our last season before the new gen, and like a lot of us are probably just going in this is like let's have some fun, let's use some stuff we've never used before. Mm -hmm. So like it might not necessarily mm -hmm. be as good of like a draft as you've seen in the past, but we're out here just trying to have fun, trying to like do our ode to this gen before we get the new game coming out. All right, exactly, speaking of trying yeah. out new things, here's Dennis's <laughs> team with nothing new. Wow. So Dennis has Landorus, I, Medicham, Mega, Ninetales, Alola, Celebi, Darmanitan, Galvantula, Ninjas, Gengar, Tyrantrum, Cloyster, and Komala. And this team averaged an 8, so it was kind of in the middle of the pack, maybe on the high end of that. I feel I like... start. I feel like two generations or like two seasons ago, we would have given this this team like a seven, but we've seen it like so many times that it's like, all right, well, I guess it's an eight because Dennis keeps doing well with it. So the one knock I have on it, <laughs> as opposed to some of his other teams, and especially the one last year that made finals, you at least had the trick room aspect of it. Like this one, it's like it's one hundred percent going offense. There is no way around it. Whereas last year, you couldn't necessarily automatically just be like, okay, I'm going to focus my entire game on speed control on the upper end of that. But uh, last year, he had like a trick room. He had Mega Mawile, he had Kerbominable, which had some awesome games, which is great to see. But like this time around, having that other aspect where you, you're you going to know what you have to prep for no matter what. And it's not going to be a matter of, uh, okay, what do I think he's going to bring? It's going to be a matter of, can I somehow beat this absurd offense yeah yeah it's a, a lot of threats a lot of threats as we've always seen from dennis um he's added a, a new option i guess sort of in speed pass which is also very annoying for this kind of team because something like metacham or landris getting a pl plus one speed is a nightmare for a team to deal with on top yeah. of the fact that he already has webs he already has the aurora veil that we've scene that provides so many setup sweepers with opportunities so it's just a, a a lot to deal with offensively one thing to note is that we can we can uh, baton pass speed just no other stats so you're not going to mm -hmm. see any storage dance pass ninjas but he can definitely pass speed to something yeah, yeah that's what i was going to say I, I think he's either going to set up webs or pass into that fucking metacham and it's going to be game over um maybe half of the games or something. Um, team has, like, no defensive options whatsoever and is, is tough on uh, hazard control and stuff like that. I still love this team um, because it's going to be very, very, very hard to prep for um, just with all of the threats on the team. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so the biggest thing that stood out to me about Dennis's team is his fire weakness. Uh, you know, Nine Tails, Alola, Celebi, Galvantula, Ninjask. It, they're all weak to fire. So, like, I mean, he's and he doesn't have anyone to really soak those fire hits too well, other than Darmanitan, but and Lando I. But, um, but as long as he doesn't let a fire, you know, set up and go wild, I think he'll be okay. I mean, Tyrantrum four times was this, so yeah, there, oh, there's yeah, one, I guess. Actually. Yeah, that's good. And I, I mean, Lando I is just going to dominate anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, he can definitely especially... threaten the fires back with some of his Pokemon as well. Yeah. yeah. But if he gets uh, Aurora Veil set up and Lando I can just be behind Aurora Veil, then uh, it's kind of stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we'll see a lot of that. I think we'll see a lot of stupid games from Dennis.
<laughs> and I, I love uh, I love Gengar on this team because like a lot of times people are just gonna be like, okay, I'll slap Brick Break on something that can fight, uh, that can beat Nine Tails. But now you can have that Gengar. So like even if you kill Gengar, which is gonna be tough under Veil, yeah. you, like you just don't have that free way to get rid. You're gonna have to defog any hazards and defog and like hazards kind of hurt him. But I mean, you're not gonna get a chance to get it up if you want to get up your rock. Something's dying. Yeah, yeah, you lose Tails a lot. You do lose a lot to take the turns to get up hazards. I mean, all of Dennis's games, they're like 10 turns to like 15 <laughs> turns max. If you go to 20 turns, he like blames you for stalling him out. Like, it's an interesting uh, if, you go, if you go 20 turns, he brings uh, Acupressure Metacham. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's a classic. <laughs> all right. Moving on, let's look at E-Rob's team. The one team he seems to hate. Um... I don't know how that happened. I don't know how you draft a team you really don't like, but shout out to Eron. All right, so his team is Mew, Scolipede, Togekiss, Low Pony Mega, Metagross, Primarina, Crocodile, Gigalith, Tangela, Type Null, and Noivern. Team got an average of a 7.7, .7, so it's kind of right in the middle. Uh, I guess I can start on this team. So uh, I like I like a lot of the offensive potential here, which is kind of weird coming from an Erob team because if you know if you've seen Erob in the past, he loves his like stally defensive like Snorlax Suicune type stuff. But here he like picked a really offensive build, which is probably why he's not a huge fan of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for being totally honest, I agree. <laughs> Megalop's awesome, and then he also picked the best counter for Megalop, like with his first pick, which is super cool with Mew. Um, and then he's got some hazard stack options to Scolipede, as well as speed pass to like something like Primarina or Metagross, which is really cool. For sure. I love his offensive potential. It's just, it feels weird to say this about an Erob team, and I feel like just defensively, it's not got that like one thing to sponge like a massive hit. Like if something like to like take hits. I don't know in the long run besides Mew and Togekiss what where that's coming from. Like if there's something with a good typing advantage over the two, it's like something. It's going to be tough to play around that, and I'll be interested to see how Erub does with a more offensive build like this. Yeah, I mean, I think for a build like this, I think if it was a player other than Erub, I don't think I would be talking too much about what he can do defensively. It's a very good offensive build. Um, other than, you know, rounding out with Tangela and Type Null, which are pretty passive po Pokemon. But, um, like, for the most part, these are really good threats and a lot of good offensive options. I mean, Primarina is a nightmare to deal with. Low Bunny is always very good. And Scolipede gives things like Metagross and Crocodile really good opportunities to get, um, like, a lot of damage off. So it, it should be pretty interesting to see how Erob particularly plays it, because this doesn't seem like his cup of tea, but it's definitely a pretty solid team. All right. I looked at it, and I, um, I didn't really... It just kind of seems like a, a team. It's just an average team. I don't really... And Erob likes to play stall, so... Uh, I don't know what he's going to do with this, but... Uh, I'm interested to see how we can get get some of these things to play stall. <laughs> stall Personally, I'm I'm thing. looking to uh, change of play style, and I'd be very happy with that because he has annoyed me in the past and other people. <laughs> um, I, I like his picks. I like the team. I gave it a seven. It's all right. I like the type null pick. I really wanted somebody to use that for a while now. Um, it's a lot better than a lot of people would think. It gets sword stance. It Normal type, only one weakness. Eviolite makes it super bulky. Um, so I guess maybe those two will be his primary walls along with Tochikis and Mew. Um, it's, it's a decent team. It's nothing special, but it's good. And I think it'll suffice for him. Yeah. I one mean... pick that makes, uh, the one pick that makes like no sense to me here, though, is I don't know what Gigalef is doing here. I don't know if he got it to, like, Stop other people from getting sand. <laughs> like you, Jared, with your extra drill. I just, I, what, it's just like a random like sand setter for a team that has no benefit whatsoever. Yeah, it's so, an interesting one. I don't really know what that does. But... See, what's that doing here? I will say, Type Null is a very Erob Pokemon. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's go to Gaiden's team. 
which is made of Latias, Gyarados Mega, Rotom Heat, Nidoking, Superior, Registeel, Aromatis, Conkledurian Mega, Araquanid, and Zangoose. A 7.9. So this coming off the 12-0 season, Gaten ends the draft pretty much like with a score right in the middle. Yep, I actually really like Gaten's team. It's got a really good offensive uh, top half. Like the first five Pokemon are really problematic to deal with. Like offensively, they cover each other really well. Rotom Heat good gives good opportunities for things like Latias and Nidoking to get in, and opportunities for Gyarados to set up, um, while also covering the Defog option on as a, as one of those Pokemon. Registeel and Aromatis seem very annoying, and and the rest of the Pokemon are also pretty good uh, offensive Pokemon to get in, at least. And Araquanid provides webs, which is really, really nice. Um, overall, I think it's a pretty well-built team, and there's not too much wasted in terms of the picks, in my opinion. I really want to see. I really want to see how it uses Mega Gyarados because we haven't we haven't seen this like used you know, in a while here. I don't think. Um, obviously, I was gone for a lot of seasons in the middle there, but it, it looks like a build where he's trying to set up for a Mega Gyarados sweep. It's another team that's kind of slow. I mean, it's got Superior and Latios, but outside of that, it just it's kind of on the slower end. So if you see a team like with a faster threat, like a Tornadus, for example, you're going to be needing Scarfers or someone to outspeed it. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I will say is I don't love how hazard weak this team is. Gyarados loves is having maybe like a spike up and like rocks on the opposing side to guarantee those kills, maybe get like a flinch of waterfall and win from there. But here, his team is really, really pressured by rocks. And there's not great ways to get rid of it. You have Rotom Heat. Well, I you feel have like Rotom Heat, Latias, and Superior all have access to defog. So I, I obviously Superior isn't the greatest defogger, but the other two are pretty consistent. So I think he has those options. I do agree that it's um, pretty bad for Rotom Heat to be your primary fogger because it takes so much from rocks. And having the bugs in the bottom half can be kind of hard um, when you need to clear those hazards for them. But I think he does have the options. Yeah, that's, that's fair. I think I, I more meant that he's going to feel more pressure to defog than mm -hmm. have the defoggers, which I, I miss. I did kind of make that point a little harsh, but... And, but then that's why I love the pick of a Raccoon in the back, because if you make your opponent pressure to defog as opposed to you, you kind of throw that back on mm -hmm. onto their side. So I think ending this draft with, with Araquanid was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. I think that kind of ties ties this stuff together and I'm excited to see how he uses that. Well, thing is, I think <laughs> just Araquanid, Superior. I lost to Cifra in season seven when I defogged the Superior, then it avoided a fire blast and a bug buzz. <laughs> So watch that. <coughs> I like Superior, so the team is good. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Joe. All right. All right, let's move think, on. Oh, okay, actually, you can go uh, ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, I think um, this team would benefit a lot from having a spinner more than more defoggers. Because mm -hmm. I think having a hazards up, you know, especially webs, um, up for this type of team, especially with Gyarados, is very important and could be really, really good. Um, but being forced to defog with one of your three choices is, I think, a lot worse for this team. Grade, uh, my grade for it. Um, and I think Rotom Heat and Superior aren't great defoggers because Rotom Heat, you're going to want to have other moves usually. Rocks doesn't help. So, really good uh, Fairy Steel Core in the, in the low tiers, and I love that. So, all right, let's move on to Jack's team, uh, which is made of Celesteela, Zeraora, Breloom, Tentacruel, Sylveon, Garchomp Mega, Hoopa Unbound, Mudsdale, Lucario, Servine, and Vigio. Team averaged a 7.9, so another team kind of right in the middle. I like that uh, Jack kind of abused some of the tier changes this this generation or this season with Breloom and Garchomp being uh, tier threes, those are really powerful mods for their tier, and he definitely was uh, happy to pick up both of those. Um, I do like a lot of what these Pokemon can do offensively, 
but something that I don't like is that there's not a lot of options to, to set them up. Um, there's not a lot of momentum through U-turns or bolt switches. There's only uh, zero aura in terms of that. So Pokemon like Garchomp and Hoopa that are really, really threatening are harder to get in. I do like a lot of the picks that he has. I just feel like having more um, like momentum setters for a Pokemon like Hoopa would be really nice to have for this team. Great point. Uh, I love the first two. I love the Celesteel as their aura pairing. Last season, so successfully with Skarm, where you have something, you know, Electric Week, where you have to think about bringing like HP Ground or something, even mm -hmm. for Zero Aura, because it's a really cool pick there. Um, and this is one thing that uh, E Rob had on his notes that I just thought was really apparent here is that he's got those like Celesteel as Aura, which are going to be crazy hard to play defensively, offensively, but Sylveon is going to be so pressured to wish with his this to play defense in this game. You look at his team, I think, besides Servine getting Synthesis and Behem getting Recover, unless I'm missing something, Sylveon's Wish is the only recovery for, like, those top... Which, I mean, if you can play around Leftovers, you can try to get those Leech Sheeds going out with Celesteel, go for that. But I think that if this if this kind of thing, this game extends really far for Jack, where he's got his team kind of just, like, whittled down, he might be susceptible to getting swept by something just due to the fact that everything's going to be low and there's no way to get it back but overall offensively this team is crazy i mean you got hoopa uh, i just i just hope he finds ways to like get it in and get it in good positions because like you said there's no full turn yeah he has celesteela so fuck that thing agree agree <laughs> big facts anyone who plays celesteela is a ween All right, moving All right, on. Anything to say about this? Oh. All right, Jared. All right, I guess not. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't even... <laughs> you got, like, interrupted by Brian. I didn't even hear what you said. Oh, are you here? Do you want to talk about Jack's team? I mean, yeah, I guess, I mean, it... And I think that's my issue with it, is that Zero Aura is kind of, like, the only fast thing on the team. And nothing outside of Sylveon has a reliable recovery walls that are going to be chipped down aren't going to be able to recover enough i don't think but if he can work around that and i'm sure he will fine that's actually a really good point that i didn't think of is that the speed gap between technically garchomp before it mega evolves but we're for technicality let's say tentacruel at base 100 with the next best being zero or at i believe 143 that's going to mean you're going to see like fast things be really bulky just because they don't need to run that speed or either like choose like modest or adamant so it'll be interesting to see how he plays around that and maybe that's like where a free agency acquisition can come into play just due to the fact that it's going to influence prep from the other side that might not benefit him yeah all right moving on to jared's team jared has excadrill Kalade mega ferrothorn thunderous florgies salazzle for Alligator, Golbat, Rhydon, Linoon, and Guzzlord. Before I give the score, Floor G's? Really? <laughs> Floor G's. <laughs> I'm aware that I pronounced it wrong, okay? And uh, I guess this team had a Floor Jesus type score when it had an 8.6 with the best score of all our drafts. Wow. Hey, let's get it. Before we get into it, Jarrett, do you want to say anything about what you were thinking when you drafted this team and what you're trying to do with it? Um, I had a plan to kind of go really, really balanced, but try and draft a lot of stuff that I haven't really used before. Outside of Thunderous T, Florges, and Salazzle, I used once. Um, I pretty much haven't used these Pokemon. I don't know. I tried to get... I wanted Excadrill right away, and I was surprised it was available when it got to my pick. So I took it. Thunderous T is a long favorite of mine. I wanted that. I mean, other than that, bulk in the low tiers, I guess, other than Ferrothorn. You know, Golbat being tier 5 is really good. Um, and it's my fighting check. I have, like, 5 fighting weaknesses. So, I don't know if it's my best team ever. I think those ratings might be a little too high, but... Um, <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, so uh, I think that this is kind of another example where you're, there's a lot of balance on this team. Uh, you have like some nice breakers with Gallade, and then uh, even extra drill Thun DT with some like sweepers, like with for Alligator. Salazzle is fast, especially with the Z move, is going to be really nice. Um, and you even got like Linoon is something that I've really wanted to see like put in just so much work and have someone use that thing. Uh, a lot because it's it's on it could be crazy good hypothetically and I just it'd be something really fun to see, and I I think that tier to get sand might be the only knock I have just because the probably the biggest weakness is it's a little slow like there it's like fast but it just like doesn't have a ton of bulk necessarily in the on the fast end so you're probably gonna see a lot of scarfers. That you're gonna have trouble, might have trouble out speeding. So like having like a sand drill tier pick would be pretty cool. But other than that, I think it's a really well balanced team. I love floor just wish passing to some of those low tier stuff that don't get recovery. And come on, he's got Guzzlord on it, so it's like awesome already. And draft of the Lord. Yeah, respect to the Lord. All right. Uh, personally, <laughs> I actually didn't like this team that much. I mean, it's a pretty good team. I like a lot of the Pokemon on it. I just don't look at this team and. And be like, wow, this does anything particularly really, really well, right? It just kind of like does everything pretty, pretty good, I guess, okay-ish. And it just like doesn't, I don't know, it's not like, I don't really know what this team does, to be honest. And for me, that's kind of concerning because I like to have a lot of direction off of my draft. But I guess having the flexibility is uh, a pretty good aspect of this team. Um, but yeah, it's pretty like middling speed tiers. It's pretty middling in terms of bulk so i just i don't know what pops out to me about this team i guess all right uh, i thought tier's team is very uh it's just very balanced but like balanced with really good <laughs> pokemon so like it's not su super bulky it's not super offensive but they can all do a job and do it well, you know? There's the, I really don't see a weakness in there. Mm. All right, moving on to Kevin's team. Kevin has Zygarde, Venusaur Mega, Namikyu, Slowking, Weavile, Stack Attacka, Sock, Staraptor, Kecleon, Silvalli, and Golem, Alola. This team got a uh, 7.2, so it was kind of on the lower end of the spectrum. So I, I guess I can, uh, I can start. Uh, I think this is a type of team where, uh, so obviously he's got Zygarde, and at with like a defensive core of like Mega Venus or Slowking, and I don't necessarily see where he's breaking a ton of really fat cores here, because Zygarde with a Z is nice, like, for sweeping, but he's got a lot of, like, cleaners without necessarily breaker. Like, yeah, you got Staraptor in there, which is awesome, but you've got, like, Weavile, which wants to clean, you've got Mimikyu that wants to clean, and it's just... I don't see a ton of, like, wall-breaking potential to put yourself in that position where you click buttons and then you're like, okay, Zygarde can win, okay, Mimikyu wins. And then... Defensive end, I mean, he's got, like, Mega Venu, which is always super annoying, but then alongside that, he, like, doesn't have a great flying resist, because you can slap, like, some kind of ground coverage, fighting coverage, hidden power if it's special for stack attacka. Um, so I'm just, I feel like w there's, like, potential here, but to put him in the position wh where he has those cleaners and has a defensive core doesn't have the best mods in the middle to support that. So I, I actually kind of like this team. I do agree that it could use some of those uh, wall breakers would be really helpful. And some of the checks for Venusaur's problems would be really good, such as like a flying check, which isn't really consistent. He kind of relies on Silvali, like electrics or steels or whatever to deal with those. So he's going to be hard pressed to use his Silvali in very specific ways. Um, however, I do like how this team's Constructed, I think Venusaur Sloking is a very obnoxious core um, to deal with, very hard to kill. Um, same thing with, and, and Zygarde also pairs very well into that. Um, 
but definitely having a, a, a bit more like direct threats, you know, come in, click a big button and, and blow something up would be really nice for this team because it would be able to take some of the pressure off of that defensive core. I think this is a pretty average team and it, but I, you know, it's got its ups and downs. Um, I do really think that drafting star after was a very good idea because whether he realized it or not, that thing pretty much destroys his entire team. Um, anyway, um, uh, the bulk that he's got is 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 good, but it really not good if one of them goes down because then you know what do you have for you know this check or that check because is very good, but the things that can get through that um, stack attacker doesn't really stop as uh, Brian pointed out earlier. The average team he'll do okay, I think. I don't know. All right. Let's move on to Lauren's team then. So Lauren's team is Buzzwool, Latios, Lacephalon, Kleiscore, Toxapex, Klefki, Sevta Omega, Electros, Swallow, Cryogonal, and Liopard. Uh, so this team got an overall rating of a 7.7. Uh, and uh, stop me if you heard this one before, but Lauren took Buzzwell with the first pick. What? <laughs> wow. Crazy stuff. But I think, I think this team is pretty cool. I mean, uh, we got a lot of offensive threats. You got two Beast Boosters and Buzzwell, Latios, and Blacephalon. Um, in addition to just fat with Gliscor Toxapex. Uh, that that <laughs> Gliscor Toxapex is going to be nasty. That is just disgusting. Yeah. And not to mention, she's got, as she said, Swallow in the back. So that's fun. <laughs> and, and Leopard as well. Yes. Yeah, young Leopard. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised you just didn't, didn't say Eel for Electros. But I think it's, <laughs> it's going to be a fun team where just you have a fat defensive core and you have, like, some absurd offensive threats. Um, just like, there's, I think this is an example of not an as balanced team one like Jarrett's or something like Karns at the beginning, but it's going to be a really fun team to use, I feel like, especially with, you know, Klefki as well for um, hazard support there. So I, I just think that she can take this in a couple of different directions and just, just based on her offense and her defense right off the bat. Yeah, I mean, something I will say is we haven't seen Tox effects in a while in the SPL, and a lot of that's due to uh, Carlos's uh, very, very bad debut of that Pokemon room when... Uh, this generation first started. Um, it was just getting set up on left and right by sub CM sets uh, and, and that sort of stuff. And he was just not having a good time. I mean, he lost to sub CM Arcanine. But I do like that Buzzwool and Blacephalon <laughs> have the opportunities to, you know, kind of threaten those Pokemon that kind of want to just sit there and and take advantage of that. So there is, it isn't as free as it would have been in the past, uh, to say the least. And how awesome is that Swellow with Toxapex pairing? You sub up, and then you just get killed by Specs Boom Burst. Genius. <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly what she was thinking of. Yeah, this team is uh, really strong. <laughs> it's, like, like insanely good. Um, I actually think Lauren has the best had the best draft in the entire league. Um, even though, basically... Everyone knew she was getting Buzzwool first pick. Like, it didn't matter. Still able to draft everything else she wanted. So, um, this was one of my. Team. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm done. This was this was one of my favorite uh, teams. Tied for first with a few others. Um, I think it's got really good balance. Um, but it has some sort of extremes on both ends. Some, you know, really extreme bulk in Glasgow and Toxapex, and really extreme offense in Swellow and Buzzwool and potentially uh, potentially Latios and also Cephalon. I think Klefki will also be really annoying paired with Toxapex and Glasgow. I think that core is going to be with um, a really good turnaround from her having the worst draft of last season or whatever um it was a drawback either i know everyone knew she was going to get it first pick but it even though she's constantly near or around the bottom of the league 
Boswell is always near or around the top of the MVP charts. He does this time. The best is, you know, the like the running bit where she runs scarf Boswell every single week, and then one week she <laughs> didn't run scarf, and we were all just floored. It was the greatest thing ever to see. <laughs> that it was not, genius, like, man. <laughs> all right, let's move on to Noah's team. Oh, you know, this is Dude's team. I was clicking through the wrong way. All right, so we got Tyranitar, Tangrowth, Pinsir, Mega, Gligar, Magneton, Arcanine, Blastoise, Cartana, Weezing, Crawdon, and Dust Gloss. This team got a 7.2, so it's another one that was kind of on the lower end of the spectrum, which is kind of a change. Newt generally is a really highly rated draft every year. Um, so I think the thing to take away is he started with two things really familiar to him, Tyranitar and Tangrowth, which is he's always had success with. And then he drafted that Mega Pinsir, Pinsir, which is really cool. It's something that I used way back in Season 3, which was so much fun. Um, but I, I also feel like this is a team, that, like you look, go back at Lawrence team and you have like all those breakers and not saying that Mega Pinsir isn't a breaker, but you can also use it as a cleaner with quick attack. It just got a lot of things that like, they're checked by the same mods, like Pinsir, Kartana, be inviting in the same thing. So you have, uh, you he's going to have a tough time to work, which you can also use that to your advantage if Pinsir whittles it down you put it in range or something that cartana does cartana starts beast boosting and that's you know that's that's game from there um but i'm going to be really intrigued to see how he tries to clean with this team just because it's kind of it's kind of slow going the, the two things that sweep are also checked by the same stuff but one thing i love is that tier three crawdont sitting there crawdont's like one thing that seems super cool that we haven't really seen used in a while and that, that thing is a truck it just hits like a truck so it'd be it'll be fun to see him try to use that to break for his i don't know in my opinion this is a pretty good example of like a a balanced team like not like a balanced team like with a lot of different things and a lot of options like specifically balanced with bulky mons and a couple of breakers um that can get opportunities off of the, these slower bulkier mods like Arcanine, Blastoise, Tangrowth, Gligar, kind of trying giving trying to give opportunities to Pinsir Mega or um, Weezing and Kartana. Um, <clears throat> sorry, not Weezing, Crawdon. <clears throat> it's Cleaner Weezing? Yeah, yeah, Cleaner Weezing, Cleaner <laughs> Weezing. But like, you, you do get a lot of opportunities through the, those Pokemon instead of um, being completely reliant like as we talked about in kevin's team earlier like there are options offensively and a lot of these pokemon that are bulky are aren't really slouching around either like tyranitar's a heavy hitter arcanine's still a heavy hitter um like relatively speaking and so i feel like this team has a lot to do um but it it is one of the issues that pincer and kartana both are going to struggle with things like electric types i mean traditionally Zapdos is a very, very good check against both of those, but obviously not every team's going to have Zapdos. Yeah, I mean, how is he killing Zapdos with this team, just flat out? Uh, yeah, that's good. T-Tar, T-Tar. He has T-Tar, dude. Okay. All right, all right. Okay. Problem solved. He's, he wins. Best team. Dude, uh, we <laughs> solved the Zapdos problem, and now this is the best team. So Newt gets a 9.9. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, that last I'm point, if you could... Sorry, go Joe. I was going to make a joke. Go ahead. Go ahead. Make your joke. Save it. We need some jokes. No, 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 I can't. I can't say it. No one's going to laugh anymore. Oh, no, it was you, Endo. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was just going to say I'm on the opposite side uh, that Brian is. Um, I think this is a very not balanced team. You bulk, 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 and then three offensive uh, sweepers or three physical sweepers. Um, I think the only thing that breaks that mold is like Magneton and. I don't know. I don't see much coming from just, you know, like three or four of those months time and time again, really well. So, you know, there's nothing in the way of him doing well with it. I just think that he has very little options on the special side. You know, a couple things that get dealt with by the same thing, like Noah said earlier, it could end up being a problem. But before. I, I won't be surprised if he pulls it off. Anyways, I don't want to leak too many strats, but uh, 
he's coming through with that trick room core at the bottom, dust clops, crawdon, trick room setup. Your, your game's over, man. That that crawdon's breaking things. Set up that no, trick room for sweeper wheezing too. Yeah, yeah, sweeper wheezing will come through too. <laughs> the one, other, the one other thing is that uh, he doesn't, he doesn't have a fairy type. So I, I'm wondering if he was trying to draft Galolian wheezing with its nice little smokestacks, you know. <laughs> that was like, a joke. That was the joke, by the way. Um, he laughed. That worked. That it's thing true. looks like Doug Demidome. That's like this, that, that thing was like. Yeah, I know, right? That's <laughs> the fucking Alolan executor of this generation, dude. Like, it looks so right. Dumb. Yeah, like, every gen they just make something super fucking tall. Yeah, like why do they make it so tall, dude? Like it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it thinks ten feet. It's a it's a I big just... boy. It's a big boy. All right. You're so right, like we're just gonna be Doug Dimidon. Like every single time you run into that on like the ladder or something. <laughs> all You're right. Damn right. All right. All right. All right. It's a, okay. Let's move on to Noah's team. He's got a uh, Tapu Coco, which he traded uh, a lot of weight for. A Halucha, Amungus, Agron Mega, Ente, Ditto, Aloma Mola, Como O, Mandabuzz, Raichu, Alola, and Pylaswine. So I didn't vote on my team, so between the three other voters, uh, my team averaged an 8.3, which I would believe is tied for third. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I wasn't sure if you were supposed to vote for your own team, so I just did anyway. Yeah, me too. Gave myself anyway. the best rating, too. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I, I like this team. Um, the Coco Lucha core is obviously a, a big problem. I, I Something I just don't 100% get is how that kind of plays into, like, this Amoongus, Agron, Alomomola, Mandibuzz kind of thing. Because that's a really, really boring, like... Set of Pokemon and Coco and Halusha are on the complete other side of that spectrum. So, so I'm interested to see how you play around with those, but it looks it looks like a fun team. I love the Alola and Raichu pick. I love that thing, um, and I'm interested in seeing it under uh, Electric Terrain. Brian, it's just bulk everywhere outside of your main offensive threats, um, but I could see that working just fine. You know. You wish pass into one of your offensive threats or your freaking uh, your bulk that doesn't get recovery like Agron. Wish pass into Agron is disgusting. Um, so comes in with more offense contributing to Coco and Lucha. See most of Coco Lucha this this season from you. I mean, so like destroy some people. I'm sure. <laughs> The, the one thing I wanted to do here is that I kind of look at my team and I was like, okay, I've got Coco Lucha, that's my offense. And if, like, you know, I, mean, I love bulk, I love just absurd bulk. So I was kind of like, last year was that I didn't have any speed control. So, like, even with that bulk, I just kind of got swept at the end of the game. So now I just got an absolute crazy speed check. And then I just wanted to build the fattest thing possible around it, considering I'm going to be volt, uh, volt turning, switching out. With uh, you know, Manda Buzz, Coco, Lucha gets you turn up, then I'm gonna use it there. But I I think that it'll be interesting because I feel like I'm going to want to bring every eleven all eleven months. All eleven could be viable every <laughs> single week. So I think that that I feel like trying to prepare for this is gonna be because like, okay, maybe you need to set up to try to outspeed Coco, you need to set up to try to break something. Well, I've just got that ditto sitting there as well. Which is going to influence that. So I'll be interested to see how people try to prep for this just stally, absurd bulk on the top of the spectrum there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm excited to see uh, Raichu Alola go surfing. It's the coolest thing. True, true. Surf. It's a cool Z move. Ditto. Ditto is cool too. So it's a cool team. Good team. Thanks, Joe. Yep, no problem. Eight out of eight. All right. Moving on to Robert's team. He's got Zapdos, Manaphy, Thrakion, Scizor, Mamoswine, Gudra, Comfy, Copagrigus, Venusaur, Meowstic, and Houndoom Mega. And then Robert's team got an 8.3, so that, was, that one was also tied for third. Nice. Good for Robert. Shout out to Robert. So uh, I think looking at this team, uh, 
is that it's another example of just a lot of really good mons that, you know, they fit well together from a defensive and offensive standpoint. Um, I I think that Zap, Zapdos, Manaphy, like, Scizor, these are some, like, nice defensive mons that can play really offensive. Uh, I just... <coughs> to kind of that same issue that I that I that we kind of hit is that I have like the high end speed. It's like really nice for Scizor and Houndoom is great uh for speed, but it just you're gonna run into Scarfers, especially for like something like a setup mana fee for Terrakion and really the like absolute best defensive core around it. But it's just a really nice balance team in addition to the fact that I absolutely love Comfy and I think as a tier five it's so ridiculously good. Yeah. Comfy is stupid good. Comfy's I... kinda of broken for a tier five. We should have moved this thing, dude. Games. Don't know. And then, you know, it starts setting up call minds and kissing on you and, and you lost. Um It's one of my favorites. It's super balanced. Um, I think the only problem with the team is the speed. Um, but even then, it's not that big of a deal. You've got Terrakion at like 108, and you've got a few tier, uh, a few 100 speeds. Bad. It's just not a... Oh, and you got Mega Houndoom as well. Forgot about that. Yeah, I just think the, the, the balance is really there, and I think that's going to really, you know, propel him forward. He finished last season, but I think he could finish even higher with this team because I like this one better he, than the last one. He knocked me out in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, he, uh, did. Damn. he definitely did. Um, something I'm interested in is the Meow Stick, <coughs> particularly with the last three picks of this draft. I think Venusaur, Meow Stick, and Houndoom is like me this interesting idea. I'm pretty sure Meow Stick gets Sunny Day, right? Does it get Sunny yeah, Day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what I'm thinking is, you know. You got the chlorophyll Venusaur, you got the solar power Houndoom, you breaking things, things are dying, the bodies are dropping, and then you still got things like Manaphy and, and Scizor um, later on in the game that are going to be problematic to deal with as well. So I feel like it's a really good value for those tier 3, 4, and 5 picks down there that is pretty hard to deal with, um, especially for being really low cost. Um, so I think that's pretty nice. Yeah, so to me, it looked like he spent um, the first half of the draft just getting bulky offense. It's straight up just bulky offense. And then um, with his lower tier picks, he got a bunch of budget, um, probably underrated, possibly in Comfy's case, under tiered uh, support Pokemon. So it really looks like it's just bulky offense with some cheap support. That's actually really good. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how he can. Uh, if he can support them well enough with those. Yep, yep. All right, let's move on. Let's go to Ryan of Cacturn Club's team. Uh, he's got Landorus T, he's got Mawile Mega, Keldeo, Hydreigon, Magnezone, Volcarona, Decidueye, Archeops, Bruxish, Garbodor, and Crabominable. All right, and then this team got an average of an eight exactly, so he averaged an eight. So pretty like on the higher end of the middle of the pack. You know, just reading through that team is a. I think this team's like really, really good. I feel like uh, the first six six picks are really, really hard to deal with. Landorus is really, you know, it's Landorus. Mawile's a hard Pokemon to deal with, especially when we're missing something like a lot of the OU checks to it. Like uh, Magirna is pretty common. And not every team's gonna have things like Zapdos as well. Um, well, and then Keldeo through Volcarona, they're all pretty problematic Pokemon. So I think a lot of these picks are really good. Some of the like the more question mark picks are on the lower part of the draft, like Ruxish and Crabominable are like they're pretty good Pokemon, but uh, I, I'm not 100 percent sure if they're the right fit for this team. Well, first off, uh, congrats to Ryan for winning the uh, SBC and moving up uh, this year. So it'll be fun to uh, fun to get to play him, see how he does uh, when he's moving up to the SBL. Um, but yeah, I think that's a really good point, uh, what you were saying with those low-tier picks, because this team's got an absolute like ton of offense. It's going to be hard to switch into. So I would have liked to see maybe that like back end to be used to shore up some defensive course. 
you know, try to uh, make life a little easier for those, uh, for like Sweeper Volcarona and all that, uh, all that offense he has up top. And just like something like Kerbominable, like Bruxious, like you're saying, does seem like a little redundant, but I do love the hazard support that he's got with Volcarona because that, that's such a tough thing to play around. I would have like liked to see a spinner with it, maybe, because like Garbodor spinning and then Volcarona, you had a spike, a toxic spike, that would have been really cool. Mm -hmm. So like maybe even like instead of a Kerbominable, just try to grab like a low tier spinner or something to help out your True. top tier mons. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think that this team is going to be scary to prep for. It's got so many threats and it'll be really, really tough to prepare for all that offense that he's packing. So something I actually just looked into is that Bruxish does actually get Trick Room, so we do have that, like, Dennis aspect of Crabominable <laughs> Mawile with Trick Room. That could be a pain in the ass to deal with, um, just because under Trick Room, those things are, are pretty much unstoppable. So that is something definitely to look out for. Um, but yeah, the, the, the lower picks could have helped out with, you know, spin support and that sort of stuff as well. I definitely agree. I had no idea that gets spin. I guess it just you look at it. No, oh, not sorry. spin. Trick room. Trick sorry, room. I meant trick room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's ridiculous. Dumbass fish. I mean, no roast. <laughs> Basculin get trick room next. Like, what's what's this gonna come to? Shit, the tricky Garbador fish. Get trick room? I feel like it does for some reason. It probably doesn't. No, nah, I don't. It don't. It don't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that would be fucking wild. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, anyone else got something to say about this team or not? Uh, yeah. Um, so when I was I put together my notes and I wrote, "Jesus Christ, this team is so fucking good." Wow. <laughs> that that's all I wrote. So. Nice. I mean, he has Lando T, Mawile, Mega, and Keldeo. So at that point, it's already a good team. Yeah, I guess I'm in the minority. <laughs> I think you said this team is so good for the three most offensively rated teams. So I don't. I think the uh, blueprints out on how to how to get you to like a team. <laughs> Here, um, I think this team is good. I don't think it's great. Um, I think it's got its problems. Uh, users be like usually offensive mons or one that you might not bring all the time in Decidui. Um, is kind of not good. I mean, because Hydreigon using Defog doesn't happen too often either. And Landorus gets kind of crippled by being half, uh, having to use Defog like that. Um, but I do think that he's got a lot of the core, like, really good Pokemon, especially offensively, that he could utilize. About, you know, probably for Volcarona, at least, keeping rocks off the field. Yeah, and, like, I, I didn't even realize this until now. I think... He's got uh, four defoggers are weak to ice. That's true. Oh, uh, yeah, that's not good either. But that'll be something that's going to be tough to play around. True, true, true. Good points, good points. All right, so let's move on to the other Ryan's team, the Ryan of the Olympia Bertix. He's got Victini, Papabulu, Suicune, Umbreon, Aerodactyl, Mega, Dawnfan, Snorlax, Dublade, Raikou, Zatu, and Raticate. Shout us to Raticate. That thing's Ryan... better facade someone into oblivion or yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna, like, not I'm gonna satisfied. Lose I'm gonna lose to Raticate. Week ten. Be there, be there <laughs> or be wait. square. <laughs> you better prepare. Yeah, I've been this preparing. Team, this team got an eight, like an eight point zero, but I feel like it's automatically a ten if Raticate gets more than like two kills on the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Such a cool mod. <coughs> All right, so I think uh, think this team's pretty cool. I love the defensive potential, like right off the bat. You've got Umbreon wish passing to a bunch of stuff because Umbreon's just stupid, and you've got Grassy Terrain with a bunch of grounded things, which I really appreciate recovery. So I think it defensively, it's got an absolute ton of potential, and I also love that Vic, he picked up comes in and like pursue traps Victini and Mega Aerodactyl. And I think Aerodactyl is something that's super cool that we haven't seen used too much. That like that thing is awesome. It's so fast. It hits pretty hard. It's got great bulk action. Just kind of a theme here that this versus the other Ryan that we just looked at, this team is going to be so stupid to break. And then you just 
throws in Victini, Tapu Bulu if you don't have a great grass resist, and he just gets kills and tries to clean late game with like a Mega Aerodactyl or like something smart. So I think this is really cool. I love Mega Aero in uh, draft league format because it it not only hits really hard but also gets good support moves and you know Stealth Rock and Taunt specifically um, as a lead. Um, and I think it's really undervalued. But I think having Bulu and, like you said, all these grounded things that could really benefit from having the extra 6% each turn, like Victini, like Suicune, like Umbreon, like Donphan, Snorlax, it's just disgusting. And I think it's going to be really hard to deal with. Probably do battle him, I just hope I don't. Uh, I think it's really balanced. More focused on bulk, perhaps, but... And, you know, it's got good speed tiers, too. In Aerodactyl, Victini, and Raikou. Not too much of a gap between all of those. Yeah, I mean, every season we got someone who's looking to break the, the turn record. And this season it's Brian, man. This is a boring team. I'm sorry, <laughs> dude. This is lame. Hey, stop <laughs> knocking these boring teams, man. Just gotta play sorry, the sorry, 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 sorry. They can all be dads out here trying to end in 10 turns. I respect, I respect the long game. <laughs> okay, okay. This guy's getting six hundred percent out of his Tapu Bulu grassy terrain. Like I get it, I get it. <laughs> no, no, this team's really bulky. It's it's really hard to deal with. Things like Dublade and Victini are incredibly are made even more challenging to kill, um, because of Tapu Bulu's terrain, um, covering the earthquake options. Um, same thing with Raikou is a little bit like it has no weaknesses really under under grassy terrain, so these are kind of um, challenging Pokemon to take down. Um, I I do think a lot of the healing is is covered by Umbreon and Rest in this team, um, but having the Bulu does cover up a lot of that weaknesses because a lot of these are bulky Pokemon without recovery. Um, but as we've seen with E Rob in the past, that ain't stopping. Uh, sweet goon from falling asleep while you play the game. So, um, so we'll see. This is a challenging team to take down. I also think that this is a great example of using your low tiers to your absolute benefit. Uh, with Radicate just you know hanging out there. Sorry, buddy, <laughs> not including you on this one. But like, uh, like once you already have Umbreon, just picking up Dewblade. That's such a good core. Like using a tier three and a tier four, like. Mm -hmm. Just trying to kill those two things under grassy terrain, even with and taking fighting and bug, not even tight taking fighting types. It's just a great example of way to, of using your low tiers better, and especially on a team that doesn't have just hazard support. It has some spin, it has some rocks, but Zatu in the back to prevent like just spike stack on this team, which yeah. could potentially be annoying for switching around. Is just I I love the way he he short up that beginning core with the back of his draft. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Agree. Agree. 100%. All right. Let's move on to the final team of this video. Uh, Wait, time out. Oh. Notice Joe didn't say anything about a defensive team. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Joe's a hater, just like me. I respect is this, Joe. Is this Ryan's team still? Yeah. I tuned out for like a second. It's Ryan, the second Ryan's team. Okay. So, uh, yeah, oh yeah, my notes, I wrote, IDK, I don't like this team. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So I guess you you guys are kind of right that how I feel about it. <laughs> Y'all can catch me week 10 watching Netflix while I play Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to Tony's team, which is the last team of the draft. Um, Necrozma, wow. Beedrill, Mega, Skarmory, Infernape, Melodic, Zygarde, 10%, Delmize, Persian, Exploud, Regirock, and Clefairy. Sorry, that's Persian Alola, not regular Persian. Team averaged a 7.1, so I believe it was on the, the second lowest rated team. I, I'm actually surprised about that. Um, I, I put an 8.5 for it um, when he originally had Absol, not Alolan Persian. But now that he has Alolan Persian, I'd say that goes up to like a 9 for me. I really like this team, personally. I don't have much to say. I just like it. I don't know. Not surprised that Tony picked a Grosma. I will say that. <laughs> I can't believe he picked it round one. I, I don't think it's worth round one. He does it every season. Right? Every year. I know. Well, okay. I, I, not that I can't believe it, but, like, 
why does he keep doing it? No one else is going to take it. <laughs> yeah, honestly. But if someone does. If someone told someone told Doni that no one wants Necrozma. No, like, yeah, no one wants Necrozma. If this guy hey. stop, if this guy stopped picking it for one season, he could pick it up in tier three, man. Like that's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> it matters worse. He picked this with the number two overall. Pick. Yeah, I yeah. know, dude. It's brutal. <laughs> Lando T, nah. Necrozma, yeah. <laughs> I want to see a top two of the draft of Tony and Lauren and just see them like Oswald and Cosmo. That's the best two bonds in draft. <laughs> just so get what he wanted though. So I mean, he still got really good Pokemon. I yeah, think. yeah. Just, I think that this is a team but, that doesn't have like a ton of direction. Like, if you're building a Mega Beedrill team, you're going to be probably focusing on pivoting into a bunch of like wall breakers, which he has actually one of my favorite mods of all time in Explode, which is super cool. It's kind of nerfed with some of the more soundproof Pokemon out there, but it's like you want to really try to keep, you know, hazards off with Scarm for that. Um, and then you Delmize for Spin. It just, it seems like to me, like he was like, I want to pick some fun stuff. I want to get my Necrozza. I want to use my Mega Beedrill. But other than that, I just I don't see a general direction. Like something like interesting that went undrafted is Tapu Fini, and like if you pair that Necrozma with Tapu Fini, where you can't toxic it, and its ability already like has like does have or like uh, yeah. attacks, that would have been like something super cool to try out to see to make to, like maximize Necrozma's usage. Yeah. So just overall, I don't see a ton that the synergy works out super well with each other. It's a lot of cool mons that could work really well. I just I don't love that synergy between them right now. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a bad team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Like, you get the Beedrill, you turn off, they're kind of on the back foot, and then you put in Skarmory, and you're like, all right, sick. I guess you get a, a, a spike. That's nice. Enjoy your spike, dude. Thanks. I don't know. A, a lot of the things, like, I don't see a lot of the breakers that I would like to be seeing. It's a lot more like um, there's the volt turn, and then there's the bulk, and then there's the sweepers, and then there's not much to play in, in the middle. It's not a lot to get off of the Beedrill and the Infernape, which I feel like have a lot of potential to set up a lot of these things, but they just, with this team, they're not really doing that as much I would have liked. Like, same thing with Persian Alola. It's really great. Getting things in with parting shot, yeah, you're, you're at an advantage, and then I guess you go into X Cloud, but I mean, you're not gonna want to be playing X Cloud every game, right? That's not um, a super solid idea. Like something really, really like a really good breaker would have been nice um, to have with this team, but unfortunately, that's not something that I would see coming every single game. I don't know. I feel like he's more aiming to use Beedrill as the breaker rather than switching into things from it. Interesting. And, and I think drafting Skarmory is part of the plan for that because it's, you know, it's one of the better counters to it other than Celesteela, maybe Landorus. Um, so if he can spawn, I think he could use that as a breaker um, to a really good effect. I mean, I used it before. It worked just fine once I got past the Steel types. And, yeah. you know, I don't think I don't think Infernape's too bad a breaker either. You know, it's, it it gets priority on both, uh, on both sides. What was his E with this team? Necrozma and Persian. Yeah, I mean, like, it, if that's the case, then why aren't you seeing Infernape? Infernape helps against those steel types. I just he's doing with that Z move right there. Yeah, I was like, curious about that too. I yeah. I don't see why you would pick Necrozma over Infernape, but. Yeah, I mean, hey, like let's let's see him pull, prove us all wrong, and have Necrozma be the kill leader as he sure. likes to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see, we'll see. All right. Well, that about wraps things up. Uh, thank you guys for all tuning into our review of the season ten draft. Um, have a nice day, everyone. See you in season twenty. See you in season 20. Big facts. Noah's leaving for the yep. next nine seasons. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I've got to win, then lose for the first time, and then I'll be like, fuck this, I'm out. Didn't you win when you came back? I thought you won already. I know. I meant, like, what I, I like. I think I started, I won the first two, I lost once, and I was like, awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw, I remember that. You lost one playoff game to Ryan, and you were like, I am done with this. <laughs>
There's no excuse. Ryan just – he's the killer. He, yeah, he's the he, killer. Didn't Ryan also, like, beat someone else after, like, winning two straight championships? Was that Jack or you maybe? Uh, No, I won two straight. And I think <laughs> you won two straight, then I won two straight. And then Ryan beat me, yeah. Yeah, Ryan's the killer. So <laughs> yeah. Ryan's going to take out – bold prediction, Ryan's taking out Skipper in the playoffs. Yeah, Heard but, it here first. But which Ryan? That's the question, you know? Maybe we got a new player into the game. Okay, yeah, good point. Maybe you just have to be named Ryan. Maybe yeah. I'll name myself Ryan in this. Yeah, we got two oh, killers no. now. Oh, no. I'm going to rename myself illegally. Catch, me, catch you guys later. I already have enough Bryans. I can't handle more Ryans. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. More Ryans would be tough. Can we get more Tonys, too? <laughs> yeah, we need more Tonys. Honestly, Tony, well, I feel bad for Newt because he just conceded the name. Like, <laughs> that's pretty dumb, man. Like, yeah, this, yeah, this man's a lizard now. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm gonna yeah, end. we got third Tony. He's gonna be named Salamander. Yeah. All right. I'm about to end this this record.